Hey everybody, welcome to Science Story Time. It's uh let's see, what day is it today? It's Wednesday! <laughs> it's Wednesday and it's Gravity Week, so we've got some really fun things planned. I even <clears throat> did some experiments outside today, and I'm gonna share the videos of that later. So we have two really awesome books that we're gonna read today. Um, the first one is Oscar and the Cricket, a book about moving and rolling. And the second one is called Forces Make Things Move. So without further ado, whoop, that's my phone. I always forget to turn it down. Um, so now it's time to get started with our first story. So let me bring it up onto the screen here and let's resize that just a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna start with Oscar and the Cricket. Okay, a book about moving and rolling. One fall day, Oscar was up on the hill when he found something round and red in the grass. He sniffed it and nudged it. What could it be? Cricket jumped up. It's a ball, he said. You can make it roll. Try pushing it with your paw. So Oscar did. Actually, I'm gonna switch sides here so it's a little bit closer. Oh, that's much better. There we go. The ball rolled away through the grass. Then it laid still. Why did it stop? Oscar asked. The thick grass slowed it down, Cricket said. Try rolling it on the path. But a long branch was lying in the way. We'll have to move it, Cricket said. I'm not big or strong enough, but you are, Oscar. Try giving it a pull. So Oscar the cat says, Ugh! Oscar groaned. Slowly, the branch started to move. Has anyone else seen branches on the ground? Um, when you take your walks, I've seen a lot of branches that maybe people were cutting or maybe they just fell off in a storm. Oscar put the ball on the path and gave it another push. This time it rolled along and along and along. The smoother the surface you roll it on, the cricket said, the farther it'll go. It's rolling in a straight line, Oscar noticed, and it's heading towards, what do you think it's heading towards? The tree, bounce. Oh dear, Oscar said. It's all right, said Cricket. The ball hit the side of the tree and then it made it roll in a different direction. Have you ever tried that? Maybe you kicked a ball or threw a ball and it didn't exactly make it to where you're trying to throw it and it just like bounced off of something, that happens a lot. For a moment, Oscar stopped watching the ball to look up. All the leaves were swaying and fluttering. The leaves can move by themselves, Oscar said. It looks like it, the cricket said, but the wind is pushing them and making them move. Can you pretend to be the wind? <sighs> blow air out of your mouth, and you can easily make a piece of paper move. <laughs> Does everything need a push to make it move? Oscar asked. What about me? You can move by yourself, Cricket said. Most animals can. Our, buddy, our bodies have muscles to help us. And he jumped up and down. Moving makes you change shape, Oscar said, laughing. And this is kind of the first up close image that we are seeing of um, the cricket. And you can see that he's in different shapes when he jumps and we do the same thing. Sometimes we crouch down and then we jump up and that helps to preserve the energy. 
We can use our muscles to move ourselves and to move other things too, Cricket said. A leaf cutter, a leaf cutter ant can lift 50 times its own body weight. A, <clears throat> sorry, this is kind of tiny. Um, a hawfinch can crack a hard cherry pit in its bill. A spider monkey can swing its whole body by its tail. Whoa. A dung beetle can push a ball of dung the size of an apple with its hind legs. Do you know what dung is? It's a fancy word for poop. An elephant can pull down a tree branch with its trunk. Just then, Oscar saw the ball again lying in the grass. This time, he gave it a great big push and then it rolled through some mud and it rolled through some leaves. It's slowing down, Oscar asked. Oh, is it, is it slowing down, Oscar asked. Yes, Cricket said, but it hasn't stopped. You gave it such a strong push. So that means we can control how far or um, near things go by the amount of force that we push things with. Maybe it will never stop, Oscar said. But just then, a kitten put out a paw and the ball stopped. Hello, said Oscar. I'm Oscar, and this is Cricket. Who are you? I'm Ted, said Ted. Can I play? Ted gave the ball a push. Oscar ran after it. Look out, called Cricket. Run, roll, flutter, jump. Everything was moving on the hill. And it looks like the cricket's just trying to stay out of the ball's path. Thinking about moving and rolling. On the hill, Oscar found out about these things. Getting going. An object needs an outside force, a push or a pull, that's right, to start it moving. So a push is when we do something like this and a pull is when we pull something towards us. A push can also be from the wind. And it looks like that's what this picture is trying to show right here. Try moving different objects. Which ones can you push? Which ones can you pull? And are there some that you can push and pull? Keeping going. Once an object is moving, it travels in a straight line, unless something gets in the way. That's called a bounce. See if you can make something move in two directions. Try up and down or forward and backward. And then we also talked about stopping. An object needs an outside force to make it stop moving too. The stronger the force, the more quickly it stops. So this is stopping after a short time, stopping after a long time, and then stopping instantly. So this one right here, the ball slowed down because it was on the grass and the grass was providing a bunch of friction. And if you wanna learn more about friction, it's really easy to explore with your own two hands. All you have to do is put your hands together like this, rub them together really hard. What do you feel? Heat, that's friction. Uh, when we rub things together and it makes heat, friction is also what keeps us from sliding off the ground. A surface with little friction is ice, and that's why it's easy to slip on the ice. So that was our uh, first book, Oscar and the Cricket. I like that one a lot. Now our next book is called Forces Make Things Move. And it's gonna cover a lot of the same ideas, but we're gonna have some different storytellers. So let's check it out. Okay, Forces Make Things Move. And let me show you the front cover. There you go, that's the front cover. And this is the inside jacket, so I'm not gonna read that because we're gonna read the full story now. Wow, that looks like a lot of fun. I miss going swimming. Forces make things move. 
If you push a toy car, you can make it move across the floor. Your push moves the car. Your push is a force, and forces get things moving. Forces also make things stop. When the toy car, um, oh, wait a second. I think we can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Move myself a little farther away. Okay, excellent. When the toy car rolls across the floor and stops, a force stopped it. Forces also make um, things speed up or slow down. Any push or pull is a force. Forces can move things farther away uh, or bring them closer. Actually, I'm going to have to make this a little smaller so that I can get a little bit closer because we've got some small text again. Let's try this. Okay. There we go. Much better. Um... Where did I leave off here? Some forces are very strong. Some are weak and you can't feel them at all. Nothing starts moving until it's pushed or pulled. Exactly, we learned that with Oscar. If you don't push your toy car, it's just gonna sit there unless something else pushes it, like the wind or your cat or maybe your big brother. The wind, your cat, and your big brother can all produce force. The force moves your car. Anytime your car is moving, a force makes it start. The heavier an object is, the more force it takes to get it moving. If you want to run across the yard, your feet have to push on the ground to get you moving. If you and your big brother decide to have a race, his feet will have to push harder on the ground than yours. Why? because he weighs more and it takes more force to make him move. Once you're running, only another force can stop you. Your feet push on the ground to make you stop. If you wanna stop quickly, it takes more force than if you wanna stop slowly. You'll have to push harder. It takes a lot of force to start heavy things moving. That's why your living room couch doesn't fly across the room when you bump into it. It's why a breeze can't blow your family's car off the driveway. Other things like leaves and papers and hats don't weigh very much. Even tiny forces can make them fly around. A little wind makes enough force to make them move. But if your big brother is lying on the living room couch, you're gonna have to push pretty hard to force him off. Whenever you push something, it pushes back against you. If you push a toy car, it pushes back against you with the exact same force. If you push harder, the toy pushes back harder. This can be difficult to understand, but it's true. The force you put on a car is always the same as the force the car puts on you. If you push the toy car, your force makes the car start moving. So if the toy car is also pushing you, why don't you start moving? Because you are so much heavier than a toy car. Remember, it takes more force to move heavy things. The force that can move a toy car can't move you. Since it takes such a small amount of force to move the toy car, and the toy car puts only that much force on you, the force is too small for you to feel. And then it looks like our friend says, who pushes harder? And how would you be able to tell who pushed harder? Maybe by which person made the car go furthest, if you're doing it on the same um, track. If you push your family's real car parked in your driveway, it pushes back too. Just like your toy car, the real car pushes back with the same amount of force as you put on it. If you push the car real gently, it pushes back gently. If you push harder, it you can feel it push back harder. You can't produce enough force to move the real car, neither can your big brother. 
Sometimes you can see what's pushing or pulling, and sometimes you can't. If you roll your toy car and it hits a wall or the couch, you can see that the wall or the couch stop the car. The wall and the couch produce force. If the car hits your big brother, you better run. Uh-oh. I wonder what the big brother will do. If the car doesn't hit a wall or your big brother or the couch or the cat or anything you can see, it still stops. What's pushing on the car to make it stop? A force called friction. We just talked about that. Everything is bumpy. Even things that feel smooth, like glass or ice, are still a little bit bumpy. You can't feel the bumps of glass, they're too small, and you can't see them either, but they are still there. Whenever two things rub against each other, the bumps on those things rub against each other. The force of the bumps rubbing against each other is called, you got it, friction. Friction makes moving things slow down. When you roll your car, the bumps on the floor push against the bumps on the car's wheels a little bit. The friction is the force that stops the car. If you push the car along a shiny wooden hallway, it rolls much farther than you push it along a thick bedroom rug. The rug is bumpier than the hallway. It creates more friction. It makes the car stop more quickly. And this guy who's trying it out on the carpet says, mine doesn't roll. And look at this guy who's trying it on the wood is, uh, this one's going really fast. Well, look at mine go. So you can try using different amounts of friction to see if your toy cars or anything else with wheels, how far it might roll. That's a great idea for an experiment at home. What if you roll your car across very slippery ice? It will go even farther than it does on the shiny wooden floor. The ice is so smooth that the force of the friction is very small. But even if the car isn't touching anything, even if you pretend it's, it's an airplane and throw it right through the air, it still stops moving. It falls to the ground. Two forces stop it. One is friction. Even air has a small amount of friction. So let's test that air friction. So first, try the friction of your hands. And that heat are those bumps rubbing together that we can't see. Now, try to rub your hands together with some air in between. Can you rub them a little bit faster this way? Yeah. Now, the air still has friction, but we can't really feel it just by swatting it around in the air. So let's see what they want us to do. Let's see. Um, ooh, space. In space, there is no air. So in space, there's no air friction. If you were an astronaut and you threw your toy car into space, no friction would slow it down. Your car would keep going forever unless it ran into your rocket ship or maybe a meteor or other kind of space junk. The second force that stops the car is called gravity. Hey, it's gravity week. That must be why we're reading this book. If you drop the car, it falls. Why? Why doesn't it stay up? You haven't thrown it down. You haven't pushed it or pulled it, but it moves, so some other force must be pulling it down. That force is called gravity. Gravity is the force that every object has for every other object. And the cat says, gravity at work as he's jumping down. And we all know that what goes up must come down, and that's gravity, is things that are pulled towards the earth. You have gravity, and your big brother has gravity. If the two of you are standing on opposite sides of the room, and you both have a tiny, tiny amount of gravity pulling you towards each other, you will never feel the force from this gravity. It's much too small. And then he says, can you feel my gravity? And he says, no. The gravity force between any two objects depends on how much they weigh. 
Most of the time, gravity is a teeny tiny force. When you hold a carrot in your hand, there is a gravity force between you and the carrot, but you'll never feel it. There is a gravity force between your big brother and your cat, but neither of them care. You can feel the gravity between you and another object only if either you or the other object is really, really huge. Really huge. Like the size of the entire Earth. The whole planet. Everyone can feel the Earth's gravity. It's a big force. The Earth's gravity pulls you and everything else on or near the Earth down. It pulls things towards the center of the Earth. If you dug a deep hole and dropped your big brother into it, he'd fall until he hit the bottom. The Earth's gravity would pull him all the way down. Man, this author really does not like his big brother. And look, it looks like we're on a farm and we got a cow here. Maybe a dog, a barn. The Earth has so much gravity that when we say gravity, we're almost always talking about the Earth's gravity, not the gravity between you and your big brother or the gravity between a carrot and a cat. Gravity is such a part of your everyday lives that you probably don't even have to think about it. If you spill a glass of milk, you expect it to spill down onto the floor rather than up onto the ceiling. If you throw your car across the room, you expect it to end up on the floor, not suspended halfway up the living room wall. Where do they think they are? The International Space Station? Gravity is why apples on trees fall down to the ground instead of staying up in the sky. Gravity makes it hard to throw a baseball all the way to the moon. It's why your parents' car stays on the ground instead of soaring through the air. And it's why rockets to space have such huge engines. The big engines make enough force to be stronger than gravity. Wow. And that force is helped by this big um, fire launcher thingy that all of the exhaust comes out. And that helps to push the rocket up while the fire and flames push down. So equal and opposite reactions. Forces are all around us. Forces make things go faster and slower. They make things stop. They make things start. Forces get things moving. So let's see what each of these pictures are trying to show us. This one, there's a guy pushing a wheelbarrow. That wheelbarrow would not move unless he was pushing it. And sometimes when it's really heavy, it's hard to push at first, or it's hard to like pick up and start moving. But as soon as those wheels start to go, it gets easier. Just like the book that we read, Everybody Yelled Pull or something. In this one, um, there's water all around this girl's boat. And she can move by pushing the water towards her or away from her, which moves the boat. So the action is putting the paddle in the water and the reaction is the boat moving. This guy isn't having very much good luck trying to push this really heavy box, but he's pushing on the box and believe it or not, the box is pushing back. And last but not least on this page, we've got a friend doing a cannonball. So he's exhibiting a force on the water and the reaction is that the water's coming up and splashing. That's pretty cool. This reminds me of one of my former pets, Ethel, who hated to walk. We would call it taking her for a drag. Ooh, so that's the end. And then it tells us a fun experiment that we can try um, with friction ramps. And I actually did this um, a few times with my last job and you can try it too. All that you need is a few different types of materials and a board. So you can use like a book or a tray. If you have a piece of cardboard, that's really good. And cover it with different materials. So you can try covering it with a sweatshirt, a fleece um, blanket. You could try covering it with saran wrap. And then try putting your car down and see what happens. The end. So it looks like gravity really is all around us and really does help us in everything that we do. So there's a trick that I have been trying to do and to show you. But when I tried it on Monday, I accidentally did it inside and broke a lamp.
I didn't realize how tall I was. <laughs> but I want to show you, earlier today, I filmed um, that same experiment, and it's kind of cool. So I'm going to put it up on the screen, and I'm going to talk you through what exactly happened. So let's see if I can predict where it's going to be. I think it's going to be over here again. Okay, so here's me with a bucket of water. And I'm going to pour the water out just to prove that it's water. Then I'm going to spin it around in a circle. Now the water wants to stay inside of the container. And it doesn't spill, no matter uh, how many times I twirl it around. And look, the water is still there. So here we go one more time, spin it around. And it's kind of the same reason as... Um, if you're in a car and the car makes a turn and you all get slammed into the window, it's the same idea is you, that water is resisting the change. Now, what happened in my kitchen is that I was trying to spin it. The, the bucket hit the lamp fixture. And as soon as it hit the lamp fixture, I pulled it down instead of continuing to move it in a circle. So then I had glass all over the ground and water. So I didn't spill a drop of water when I was outside because I could keep doing it in a circle just like that. So try this outside, just in case you're not spinning it fast enough and it does fall out. Um, and what you wanna remember is to, a few things, test the handles first. Make sure that the handles are nice and firm. I got my bucket at a dollar store, so I was a little nervous that it would break, but it was totally fine. But if you have any beach buckets or paint buckets, um, ask your grown-up if you can try it with that. And then make sure, if, you're, if you are doing it inside, which I do not recommend, that there is enough room for your whole hand to go up in the air plus the length of the bucket. That is what I did not think about. So let's watch that one more time. Okay, here we go. So we've got the bucket of water, water. Then you have to start spinning it fast right away. There's no time to be slow, otherwise the water will come out. The water is pushed up into the bottom of the bucket as it goes upside down. This is also why um, we can go on a roller coaster and it kind of feels like we're being squished when we go upside down. I really miss going to amusement parks and roller coasters. I don't know about you. Um, so today we talked a little bit more about gravity as well as some of Newton's laws of motion. And we talked about Isaac Newton. He's the one that came up with calculus and the idea of gravity and these laws of motion. So Friday, we're going to finish up Gravity Week by exploring the three laws of motion using our own bodies. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of make pretend too. So that'll be really fun. And now before I sign off, let's sing the goodbye song. Okay. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now until we meet again. So long, farewell to you, my friend. Goodbye for now until we meet again. It's been great to play and read together in the hive, but now it's time to say goodbye. So long, farewell, to you, my friend, goodbye for now, until we meet again. See you on Friday, everybody, for the last day of Gravity Week. And if you want some more information, show your grown-ups these links. And if you enjoyed any of the science, had a laugh or learned something new, um, donate down here. Not expected, but appreciated. Bye. See you on Friday.